In this video, I'm going to talk about implementing the box model on our pages. That is coding widths, paddings, borders, and margins so that we can begin to see a layout develop for our pages. Now, to complete the work that is discussed in this video, uh, you will need to have watched the box model video, the concept video about the box model. You will also have to watch the video about setting up your template files for the for project one. Okay. You also should have open in brackets your main.css that has the template file there and completely coded as we did in that video step by step, as well as your portfolio. HTML. We might not be doing much work in this right now, but you never know and it's good to have it open. I would also like to make sure that you have read and have open uh, the box sizing article by Marie Mosley uh, that was linked off the assignment page uh, for the homework for Wednesday. And you can see that I've asked you to read that before starting to watch the videos. Okay, so just a little bit of review. Uh, we will remember from the box model concept video that every box um, that we are creating on our page, that is every element that we create on our page, which is indeed a box, has a width that goes from border to border, from left border to right, to right border. Each box has a content area, has a series of padding, and has margins. The padding is the space between the content and the border. We can give a border a width in terms of pixels. It can be lines, dashes, dots, so on. Um, mostly lines. The other ones don't always look that great. And the margins are the spaces between boxes from one border to the other. And you'll recall that we saw what multiple box models would look like. To find our total width of a box, you add the left border, the right border, and the right padding, and the right border, and the content area will give you the total width and the percentage. Or you can do this another way, where you know that the total width, let's say, is, um, I don't know, 600 or 80%, and then you subtract the border and the padding, and that will give you your content content width. Um, it's a little difficult because you're subtracting percentages and pixels together, but you'd have to convert those pixels to percentages. But mostly we are concerned with the overall width, and then the paddings and the borders just sort of take space away, and we'll see how that actually works. And we also need to remember that the browser window width is always 100% regardless of the size of the browser window. And widths are always a percentage of the box that they sit inside of. And we're going to see that uh, as we begin to implement things. Now, in order to make sure our boxes are behaving correctly, we need to make sure that we are setting up our code uh, appropriately. And that brings us to the uh, Marie Mosley article. What's wonderful about these kinds of articles that are online, we have people, web designers, who are just writing about web design in ways that help other people out, and they're giving you code that you can use on your page so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, and this code is completely appropriate to take because it is here for us to take. Now, it is one thing to take from here. It is completely different to go and find it on a website and just steal it from there even though we will be able to see the page sources. Uh, in those instances, you really need to credit uh, those people, um, and we do that through comments in our code. So I would like you to open up your this article uh, by Marie Mosley, uh, Box Sizing, and scroll all the way down to the bottom under Vendor Prefixes. prefixes. And here she has coded for us the box, border box, box sizing model, which we are going to need. And I'd like you to copy this completely and then go to your brackets in your main.css and you'll see starting around line 20 
Let me delete this. It says, use this section for styles that will stay the same across all screen sizes. And I know we haven't discussed the style sheet in great detail yet, um, but this code at line 20, I'd like you to paste it in, is going to be used and applied across all screen sizes, whether it be phones, tablets, or computer screen. And you can see uh, that we are styling for in the HTML, which is the main tag that we have on our pages. And you can style that main tag. You can give that properties, as well as some additional uh, universal settings for inheritance, which is what the asterisks do. Okay. And you can look that up. Uh, that's CSS3. We're not up to that kind of thing yet, but you can look that up, what those asterisks are doing online, and you'll be able to figure that, find out what that all, what that all means. I'm not going to go into it right now. Okay. But putting this in our code will ensure that the browser renders our boxes the way that I was discussing them uh, in the prior tutorial. That is, the width goes from um, border to border, and everything is relative to what it's sitting inside of. That's what this line box sizing border box does. Uh, this ensures that it works in a variety of uh, browsers that might not have implemented uh, this code as default. Okay. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is how to set up your code to ensure that you are able to center elements on your page. Okay, center boxes on your page. Just like right now on my page, Bill Wolf is centered. Um, this paragraph box is centered. Uh, my photograph is centered. Uh, we want to make sure that we are able to set that up. To do that, we need to set the HTML to text align center. And this seems a little counterintuitive because it is a text align. It would be great if it was like called box align center. That would make sense. You're putting the box in the middle. But not everything with CSS is completely intuitive. Uh, and this is one of those instances where it is not. So we need to set the HTML element to text align center. This gives the page an overall centeredness. Everything, every element, all your text will be centered, um, including the boxes. And then Whenever we want a box to actually appear in the middle, we give it a margin of auto. And that default of auto automatically puts things in the middle of the page. So let me show you in the code. So I'd like you to go into your code and in your HTML element, which we just added a second ago, add text align center and the center. All right. And you will see I'm going to take out my auto for my H1 element right now. I'm going to save what I've got so far. My box sizing text align center. I'm going to upload it. Upload this to the styles folder. Go back to my browser, refresh. Okay. So you will see that my H1 is 50% width, which I have applied in my code, but it is not in the center of the page. Okay. The text is in the center of the box but the box is not in the center of the page. Okay? That is because I do not have the margin auto, which I need to have in order to ensure that a box is being centered once I've set text align center in my HTML. So I'm going to put that back in, margin auto, oops, margin colon auto. I'll save it. And we can now expect that it will appear back in the center of the page.
Just like magic. Upload it back to Firefox, refresh, and boom, right there. Exciting. That's so cool. It just goes right into the middle when I set the margin to auto, and I have the HTML set to text align center. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the margins and the padding and the borders. You will see how squished everything looks here. Like Bill Wolf is right on top of this H2, and this H2 is right on top of this paragraph, and so on and so forth. All the, oh my gosh, look how tiny and squished out all these things are if I scroll down the page. Yikes. So I want to add some separation between this box and I want to give it actually some separation around the top and the bottom. I'm going to give it, some, and if you recall, the space between boxes what you think what it is for yourself for a second. Space between boxes is margins, right? The space between boxes is the margins. So I am going to go into brackets and for my H1, I've already got a margin of auto. That's giving me a margin of auto for the sides. Um, I'm also going to give it a margin of 20 pixels, like that. Now when I have this structure set here, and this is discussed in the book on page 314, okay, 314, Duckett discusses these shortcuts uh, for margins. Um, this is the top and the bottom, and this is the left and the right. And what's going to happen now is that we should see or expect some separation to occur between the boxes at the top and the bottom. So I should expect some space to appear at the top above Bill Wolf and some space uh, below Bill Wolf. And let's see what happens when I refresh. And there it is. Look at that. That little bit of space, that little bit of breathing room really adds a lot, really adds quite a bit. Now let's move down to this portfolio. Uh, this is my H1, I'm sorry, my H2. You can see that the content of the box, which is the text, is rubbing right up against the edge of the content area. And I want to get a little bit of room there the same reason because it doesn't look great just right up against there and so the distance between the edge of a box or the border of it and the content area is called the padding so let me add some padding to my h2 and I'm going to add let's say 10 pixels right here and when I add padding 10px, just like this, it's the same as me doing this, padding left 10px, padding right 10px, padding top 10px, padding bottom. It's the same exact thing. This is a shortcut for all of this. All right, so I'm going to delete all that. Now I can also write that shortcut as 10px, 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 10px. And this is the way I usually like to write it. It's a little more specific than the other way. It also gives me the opportunity to change some things if I need to. Now, when, when, and again, this is on page 13 of Ducket, where he explains padding. This is top, right, bottom, left, around the clock. I'm going to save it. I'm going to go FileZilla, refresh, upload to the Styles folder. 
I should be having that open, just like I tell all of you to do. Um, and now what we should expect, or we hope to see, is some distance between the content of the box and the border or the edge of the content area. And there it is, very nice. That, that's, that's very nice, I like that quite a bit. Now I don't really like it down below, and what's interesting about this is you'll notice I styled the padding to be 10px all around, but it's the, it's the height down here of this padding is, is bigger than up there. And the reason is, is because the font, if you highlight the, the font itself, you will see whoops, that the font has a little bit of space below the letters. And we need to sort of take that into account now as we're doing our styling. We don't expect that to happen, uh, but we just sort of, once we're doing our coding, we need to take that into account a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to go back and I go top, right, bottom. I'm going to make that six pixels instead. I'm going to see. I'm also going to add a border. Uh, let's say a two pixel border that is solid. And what color should I make it? Let's make it just, I'm just going to make it black, zero, zero, zero. Okay. So a two pixel solid border, that's all around, two pixels, solid, needs a solid line, and the color will be black. Fresh, upload. Back to Firefox. Now I'm going to expect this to short, be a little bit closer, more in line with what's there, and also a border to go around it. Boom. That helped a little bit. I might need to reduce it even more. But now I have a border around this header. Um, I don't really like the way it looks, but that's how you... Uh, implement a border uh, right there. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to fix this even more. I'm going to give it zero pixels actually on the bottom and I'm only going to give it a boredom bottom here. Instead of the whole border being this, I only want the bottom of it to be that. And I can style it that way. I'm also going to remove my background color because I do not like that very much at all. And I'm going to see how it all works. So I saved it. Again, code, save, upload, refresh. And that, I, I like that underline there quite a bit. I do wish that I could get that padding down a little bit further. Um, but you can see that it's right at the bottom. Um, if you wanted to try something like this, we could give it a go. Sometimes you can do negative paddings, which eat their way in. So minus, take five pixels in this instance. Give that a try. Now I also, while I'm thinking about it, I want to get some space between this and this paragraph. Now they're right on top of each other. And so, as we know, the space between paragraphs is margins. So I'm going to give myself a margin bottom. And I'll make it, let's say, 10px, just to see how it works. As you design more and more, you will get used to figuring out the spacings that you like. And everybody likes something a little bit different. And that's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, we do want to make sure that we're paying attention to our readings on design and layout and white space and so on and so forth. I don't think they really like that negative margin, negative padding in this instance. So I'm just going to put that back to zero. And maybe we can pad, do a negative padding at another time. There 
we go. And you can see that that just gave us a little bit of space right there. Very nice. And I'm going to come into my paragraph tag. I want to get a little bit of space now in my paragraph tag. Um, I'm going to give that a margin bottom. Let's say of uh, 30 pixels. I want a little bit extra space between that and the other one. And this is how we understand our box model. This is how we we uh, this is how we code it. This is how we make it work. See, there's a nice little bit of space right between these two, and just this little bit of spacing, a little bit of a border in there helps the page look a little, quite a bit better if uh, I might say, I don't know if I like the color schemes still, but I haven't done a design persona for this like you have, and you'll have yours all worked out real nice. Let me uh, show you another thing that we haven't done yet. We have not coded in our sizing for our image. And one thing that we can do, if you'll recall, I can actually code in the image, and I can give the image, because when I style in for that, I'm creating a box, IMG. IMG is the key tag here, and that can be styled just like any of the other ones. IMG, and I'm going to give it a padding of 5px all around, and a border of 2px solid, and I'm going to make this a light gray. And what this will give it is like a frame effect around it. And we'll see if that 2 pixels is enough. It is. You see that there's like a little frame effect around around that. Ooh, it looks okay. I might make it a little bit darker to match the image a little more. I can go back in. Let's say I make that 333, which is like a dark gray. Fresh upload. Back. Fresh. There it is. And that's how I can get some. A nice little border looking thing around my around my images. And you can see it applies to both really nicely. Now the widths, I already had applied the widths to various elements like the width of the heading, um, the width of the paragraph. It's right in over here. I can change that if I don't like it. Let's say I want it to be a little bit wider. I'll make it 86%. I like to make things, my percentages, in, in even numbers instead of odd. Uh, that way the screens are not trying to split, split pixels in half, which is difficult, obviously. So it's easy. some of them can do it, but it's I like to give things, um, if, any, if there's any way I can uh, with my percentages, and make sure that they are even numbers. I actually think I like that a little bit wider right there. And so any element that we have on our page, we can make the width uh, exactly the way we want it. Uh, right now my body is set to 80%. I mentioned that in the other video. And just to show you what that looks like in terms of the border, in terms of the width of the, where it's at, I'm going to give it a border. 2px solid red, uh, not red because it's orange. And you can see I'm doing a lot of the same things over and over again. And so that's the width of the body right now, 80% of the screen size. And if I'm able to grab onto it, I can show you 
that that 80% stays the same. Remember how I said that it's always, the browser window is always 100%? That is, we're seeing that in action right now. Okay, so it's always 80%. And this is what we mean by responsive, that the sizing is responding to the screen size. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more, but this is a little first little taste in that by giving our sizes in terms of pixel and percentages and not pixels. You'll see what happens here, although, and we're going to talk about this in a couple of days, is that this image, which is styled as a pixel size in the HTML, is not responding nicely. And we're going to work on that uh, pretty soon, getting that all fixed up. So I'm going to go back to my code. I'm going to remove this orange border because I do not like that there. I'm going to save it. And so you can see that just by adding borders, margins, and padding, we give ourselves some nice spacing on our page, which, and spacing is a very important design element. Um, we do not want everything right on top of one another. We want to give our viewers the ability to read what we have and make it a pleasant viewing experience. It's very easy to spend a lot of time on this, and it's important to be exacting, you know, getting things the way that you want them to look. But I'd like you to, and as the homework will show, ask you to start playing around with your paddings and your margins and your borders, setting them so that they are overriding the reset style sheet, which has defaulted everything to zero. So have some fun with it. I'm looking forward to seeing what you do. And if you have any questions, as always, let me know. Have a great night.